Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Yuzu Emulator, covering all of its major improvements and upgrades from the last one to two weeks. While much of what I'm going to be taking a look at is already in Yuzu's mainline versions, some of this stuff is currently at least only available in the early access builds, since most of these new optimizations have only been added one or two days ago and still require some testing. As usual, these changes will arrive in Yuzu mainline in about five to seven days, depending on how much time it takes to get them stable and merged to the mainline and master versions. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say that in these past two to three weeks, there have been a literal butt ton of updates. There's a hell of a lot to cover in this video in regards to those. So let's kick things off by taking a look first at Splatoon 2. Judging by the gameplay you've been watching for the last few moments, you can see that they've fixed the ink interaction in Splatoon 2, which now makes this game playable on Yuzu. Currently, you are required to disable asynchronous GPU emulation to have this ink interaction work, so for many people, you are not going to be at full speed in Splatoon on Yuzu, at least right now. Fortunately, there is a 30 frames per second mod, which you will find down in the description of this video, and I would also advise playing the game in docked mode since it gives a much better performance and also fixes some strange shadow rendering bugs. Next up, we've seen a pretty huge graphical improvement to Luigi's Mansion 3. Previously, we had broken textures, broken lighting, and a ton of vertex explosion and shader issues. On the right, you can see that this has now been completely fixed in Yuzu Early Access. Game performance in this title has also seen a huge improvement, and again, when comparing the graphical output between before and after, it's very clear to see the improvements that have been made to this title. We've also been given a fix, or I guess you could call it a partial fix to the room transition bug. Luigi's Mansion no longer turns completely black when moving from room to room, or when calling the elevator when moving from floor to floor. Thanks to these graphical upgrades, the general optimizations to the emulator, and the fact that Luigi's Mansion 3 even has a 15 frames per second mod, this game is currently in a very usable state on the emulator. You'll find the aforementioned 15 frames per second mod linked down in this video's description. Staying on the topic of games that have seen huge graphical upgrades, Hyrule Warriors is now perfectly rendered and considered fully playable on Yuzu. For the best compatibility, it's advised to use the Force 30 frames per second mode. Hopefully, now that this game is in a playable state, they can optimize it and make it run much, much faster. Again, staying on the topic of graphical improvements, next up we've seen yet another huge change that has drastically improved the emulation status of Astral Chain. These fixes come in the form of two updates, one that changed the way textures are rendered, and a second which should be added in the next few days to early access which changes the speed at which ASTC textures are decoded. Paired together, these two changes drastically affect the performance and overall stability of Astral Chain, changing it from a broken 2 frame per second mess to somewhere between around 20 to 25 frames per second, at least on my i3-based system. Playability-wise, I'd have to say it's 10 times smoother and more playable than it was before, and again, hopefully with future optimizations, this game can become far more playable for even more players on lower-end systems. Speaking of games that are now playable, Crash Team Racing has seen an enormous boost in render quality, performance, and also just general emulator usability. Thanks to optimizations now present in the early access versions of the emulator, Crash Team Racing can now be considered fully playable and at full speed if your hardware is up to the task. This and many more titles are going to see a significant performance boost in the coming weeks, that's something we'll talk about in a video later down the line. For now, let's continue with optimizations already present in the emulator. Our next game for graphical upgrades is Kirby Star Allies, where thanks to improvements to both the OpenGL and Vulkan renderer, we've seen fixes to the broken, corrupt, and just downright terrible black texture issue that was happening in the game before. While Star Allies isn't perfectly rendered due to the broken bloom you can see in the background of gameplay, it is now considered fully playable on Yuzu. Speaking of graphical upgrades and optimizations, let's take a look at the brand new anistotropic filtering setting which has been added to mainline and early access. Using Fire Emblem Three Houses as an example, you can see just the kind of impact it has on the visuals in game when set from a 0 to the max 16x setting within the emulator. It's not just Fire Emblem Three Houses that can reap benefits from using anistotropic filtering at 16x, 
Pokemon Sword and Shield and tons of other titles can also massively benefit from using this brand new setting. As is visible in both of these examples, the texture quality at oblique angles to the player camera is greatly improved when using anistotropic filtering. Okay, so to take a look at the final few optimizations and changes from the last few weeks, we're gonna have to step back to Luigi's Mansion 3, where thanks to some audio renderer changes, we have seen some very, very nice improvements in this game. To demonstrate these changes, let's take a quick listen to what the game used to sound like. Next, let's take a listen to what it sounds like now. These changes were given to us by enabling a workaround that allows the down mixing of six channel audio to stereo which gives us a much, much better gameplay experience in games like Luigi's Mansion that use it. Yet another game that benefits from this workaround is Bayonetta 2. We've seen even more improvements to Bayonetta 2, however, and thanks to recent graphical optimizations, it now has correctly rendered shadows in gameplay. Thanks to all of these new compatibility improvements to Bayonetta 2, render quality and audio-wise, Yuzu has unsurprisingly become the most accurate emulator for this game. Again, this is another title that can take advantage of the Force 30 frames per second mode if you're not able to maintain 60 frames per second on your PC. And again, hopefully with further optimizations and some very, very exciting changes coming in the next few weeks, this game is going to be much, much more performant on the emulator. So there you have it guys, those are all of the latest and greatest changes to Yuzu emulator. Believe me when I tell you that these guys have some pretty insane stuff coming in the next few weeks. So as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get all the details on those new releases as soon as they happen. Thank you guys for watching this video, hopefully it was as enjoyable to watch as it was to make. I want to give a special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys literally make it possible for these videos to be made at this point. As many of you know, covering a Nintendo Switch emulation is not exactly the cheapest thing in the world, with the support and donations you guys give drastically helping me make videos just like this one. If you would like to pledge and help to support my channel, you can find a link to my Patreon down in this video's description. That's going to be it for this video guys, once again thank you very much for watching, as always remember to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.